okay let's see the mic seems to be working as well okay that's good so this is uh, lecture 3 but as usual the l does not show up at the right time but the other other alphabets are there so you can figure out its lecture and uh, let me let me uh, remind you of what we did last time we noticed that a k dimensional subspace of 0 1 n was actually a code right it was a linear code we'll have a notation for this we'll call any k dimensional subspace of 0 1 n as an nk code okay this is denoted nk code okay can there be more than one nk code yeah i mean how do i how do i specify one nk code what should i do to specify one nk code i have to specify one particular subspace how do i do that k linearly independent elements from that i have to provide some basis right so there can be more than one nk code obviously and then if for each basis there will be a hopefully several nk codes okay <coughs> so, so 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 this this notation is quite standard n comma k n is called the block length and k is uh, there are several names for it i'll refer to it as either dimension or message length okay so that's how uh, we'll denote a k dimensional subspace of the n dimensional uh, binary vector space by the way people who are sitting rows 4 and after i would strongly recommend that you come closer because i tend to speak low often and then you can't really hear it unless you don't want to hear me you don't want to hear me that's fine <coughs> okay all right so so that's uh, that's the nk code and uh, and 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 we've been talking about the dual dual subspace right so what's the dual the dual of this subspace is dual of I'm sorry dual of an nk code okay so we saw before that this will actually be a n minus k dimensional subspace or in my in my terminology now in my notation i i'll be i'll i'll know it will be a n n minus k code right it's an n minus k dimensional subspace so i know it will be an n n minus k code that's my terminology okay all right so you see <coughs> you see by specifying the code you're also specifying what the dual is right so you can do it either way right how do you specify a subspace you either specify a basis or you specify a basis for the dual okay once i specify a subspace you know how to find its dual once I specify a dual, you know how to find each dual and come back to the subspace, right? So both of these will be equivalent in some sense. Specifying one is the same as specifying the other in terms of specification. You don't have to specify both, okay? So in this class, we will see a whole bunch of examples to make this, uh, to, to look at look closely at how these subspaces look like. And uh, I'll stick to this n equals 6, which was the favorite number somebody picked in last class, okay? So we'll pick this n equals 6 and look at a whole bunch of examples to get a feel for how these things look like. Okay, how do these dimensions look like? What are the various codes of length n equals 6? And what can we say about it? Okay, without 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 uh, looking at any of its applications or in the, using it in a channel or anything like that. We will do that later, but for now we'll just look at all the subspaces and figure out if there's anything interesting that we can say. Okay, so the main skills you have to pick up when you look at just subspaces are how do i go from code to dual how do i go from dual back to code okay what's the point of the dual right why is why is why does the dual seem interesting right to go from the message to the code from to go from the message to the code word maybe the dual is not so interesting well it's also interesting but maybe not as interesting as the generator matrix but on the decoding side you can see the dual is so nice because it gives you parity checks on the code word right you don't know anything about the message but you have a received word to work with so the dual is very interesting in that fashion okay anyway so let's see a whole bunch of examples 
the first example presumably that one can see is say we'll set k equals 0 okay what will happen if you set k equals 0 okay so this so so what, what can we do i mean this 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 is like the 6 comma 0 code okay there's only one 6 comma 0 code what is that it will simply contain all zeros. We can take this as like a notation, you know, I mean, there's no real zero dimension, right? It makes no sense. How can you have a basis with no element in it, right? Maybe, maybe we'll take it as a convention that the 6 comma 0 code refers to the all zero vector alone. Is that a subspace? Yeah, it's a subspace. Wait, so whatever you do, do it, nothing will happen, right? You add and multiply, nothing will happen. So it's a subspace. We'll call it the 6 comma 0 code. It's a trivial code, right? There's really nothing in it. It's a trivial code. Okay. So whenever you have a code, what is the skill that you have to develop? You have to go to the dual, right? That's, that's what we're going to do. So now, think about it for a while. Okay. This is my code. What is its dual? Okay. So the first thing you have to determine is what are the dimension? What is the dimension of the dual? What is the dual in this notation? Okay. If, if you have a 6 comma 0 code, the dual will be a 6 comma 6 code. Okay, so that's also a trivial thing. What is it actually? Yeah, it is the set of all six-bit vectors. Okay, so I'll, I have a notation for it. I'll simply call it 0, 1, 6. Okay, does it make sense? Are these two duals of each other? How do, I, how do I check if these two are duals of each other? Any two vectors you choose from these two have to be orthogonal, right? Dot product should be 0. Yeah, it's very clear, right? You pick all the all zero. This is going to be orthogonal to every vector in the dual, right? And that will be the only vector that's orthogonal to every vector in the dual, right? You can also convince yourself that, that has to happen. Okay? Yeah, yeah. In this case, it contains. You see, the dual and the code will even the subspace and its dual will anyway intersect at the origin. In any vector space, that will happen. So this is not that strange. Okay, you'll see as we go along, there will be more non-trivial intersections. Okay, so something I mentioned in last class, we will see it. Okay, so k equals zero is not that interesting. It only gives you two trivial codes: the code which is which actually corresponds to an uncoded system, right? Six comma six is a uncoded system. You're not you're not adding any parities. Okay, so one can think of this as an uncoded system, an uncoded situation. Okay, in the other case, like k equals zero is just totally meaningless to talk about what it is also. All right. So the next interesting thing is to look at k equals 1. Okay. 6 comma 1, will there be only one 6 comma 1 code? No, there will be there will be many, right? So there will be many. So one, I'll have to say 6 comma 1 codes. Okay. There will be several 6 comma 1 codes. How do you characterize the 6 comma 1 codes? Yeah, you have to have one more, right? So, like she's saying, she's saying you need one element in the basis, okay? And it has to be linearly independent. So, if you have a singleton set, linearly independent is the same as being what? Non-zero, okay? The only linearly dependent singleton set is what? Is the zero vector, right? So, anything non-zero will be linearly independent, okay? So, on the face of it, how many different 6 comma 1 codes will you have? Without worrying too much about going into detail, you should have 63, right? It looks like you will have 63 different 6 comma 1 codes. Okay, so let's take a few uh, 63 of them. I'll put a question mark and then we'll come back and look at it very closely. Okay, <coughs> so let's see a few examples. What's what's the so how do I how do I okay so I I for so to specify a code, I'll, I'll write down a generator matrix, you know, so that it's uh, so that it's consistent with the many of the notations. So, so a few examples. So I could take G to be, say, for instance, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? This will correspond to a code. What is the code? What is the code? How many code words will the code have? A 6 comma 1 code will have? 2 power 1, which is just two code words. One of them is all 0. The other one should be this, right? You just take linear combinations of these two. There are only two linear combinations. One is 0, and the other is this vector, 
itself. In fact, you don't have to even worry about this G. You can directly come up with all the 6, 1 codes. What will they be? The all zero vector and some <laughs> and some non-zero vector. Okay, for every non-zero vector, you will have that. Is that a subspace? Is this a subspace? Just these two? Yeah, when you add any two of them, what's the only non-trivial addition here? You're adding yeah, uh, one zero to itself. That will be the only non-trivial addition, and that comes comes back to zero, right? So this is a vector space. It's no problem. All these things are codes. Okay, but let's look at this other code. Suppose I say, suppose I say instead of one zero, I pick G to be zero one zero zero zero. Oh, it's just nothing really fancy here. What does the code look like? One code word is the same. Zero one zero 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 zero. Okay. So well, technically these two are different codes. Right? I mean, you can't say they are the same because the code word is different clearly. Okay, but in practice, suppose you say you're sending it over a symmetric channel, okay, <coughs> independent channel, right? Memoryless channel. Each bit goes through an independent version of the channel. Then what's the difference between these two? There's really no difference. Right? This is nothing but a simple reordering of the coordinates of the other code. Okay, instead of sending the second bit, instead of sending the first bit the first time, you send it the second time around. Since your channel is completely you know, symmetry is not the big deal. Since your channel is memoryless, it doesn't matter when you send the bits. These two codes really are not different. Okay, they are the same. Even though we would, they look at least in, when you write them down, they look different. They are really not the same, not not different when you use it on the on the on any channel. Okay, as long as the channel is memoryless. Okay, so so typically people don't distinguish between these two codes. Okay, so you don't think of these two codes as being same different okay there's this notion of codes being permutation equivalent okay okay so I'll, I'll make it precise as we go along basically if you permute the coordinates if one code becomes another code both of them are supposed to be the same okay there's really no difference okay so <coughs> keep that in mind so one can say six comma one codes okay many of them will be equivalent right how many codes will be equivalent to this first code that i wrote down? Six, right? Right. So I mean, there might be more for the other things, but they'll all be equivalent. For instance, if I think of g equals, let's say, let's take uh, some some example like this, and the code would be this. Okay. So this looks. This is of course not equivalent to the previous two codes, right? But there will be so many other codes that are equivalent to this. How many other codes will be equivalent to this? 6C2, right? So that would be like some 15 codes which will be equivalent to this. If I pick a, ve a vector of vector with three ones in the G, how many codes will be equivalent to it? 6C3, likewise. So you'll add up, you'll ultimately get all the 63 codes. Not all of them will be different. There'll be only six different classes. Each of them will fall into that. Okay? All right. So that's about uh, just looking at the codes themselves. So what's the next skill? The skill that we really want is to find the dual of these codes. Okay. So <coughs> so let's let's uh, let's try to find the dual of the first code. Okay. So maybe I should go to the next page if I can manage to. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay, so let's try to write down the duals. Okay, suppose I started with C equals. Okay, I write down usually C for the code 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, suppose this was my code. The dual we will denote as C perp, right? What will this be? Okay. <coughs> Okay. Yeah, everything with, it's like you're saying, so everything with zero in the first place. Okay. So that's that seems like a good answer. You have to check a lot of things, right? You can't just happily accept that. First of all, is that a subspace? It will be a subspace. Okay. So all those things you can check. But there's also other simple mechanical methods. So you don't have to come up with all these fancy methods. What's the simple mechanical method? 
Okay, I want a simpler mechanical method. <laughs> Let me be more precise. You start with G. Once G is in systematic form, you write it in IP form, IKP form. What is H? H is P transpose I N minus K, right? And the rows of H are my basis for the dual space. Okay, so there's a very automatic way that in which you can find it without resorting to intelligently trying to find it. Okay. If you can find it intelligently, that's great. But if you want to do a mechanical job, you can also do that. Okay, so how do I do that? Let, let me let me show that. I have G. What is G now at this point? 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. Okay, I have to first write, write it in IKP form by doing elimination, whatever. Okay, I have to do that. Okay, but notice here what is K? K is 1. So I1 is it's already in that form, right? So what is so this is how you split it to see that it's in that form. Okay. So now H becomes P transpose. Okay, P is what? Five zeros. So if you transpose it, you'll get five zeros in a column. Okay, and then what do you have left? It should be I5. So that's your H. Okay, and what will C perp be? It will be that five dimensional subspace which is spanned by the rows of h okay so rows of h form a basis for c perp okay <clears throat> so this is this is the same as doing elimination so how do you find null space for a vector for a matrix this is what you do right you eliminate get it into RRE form and then you identify your free variables put put ones there and then it's the exact same procedure it's nothing different okay just that we have a formula for it in the IP and then P transpose I form okay so this is the mechanical method okay you just reduce G to the systematic form and then use the formula to go from G to H and the rows of H you know will will generate the dual which is the C okay very simple so let's look at the other example. Let's, uh, well, this is for the first one. For the second one, we had seemingly a more difficult problem. Okay, because I had C being this and then this being this. Okay, in which case G becomes 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so here it seems like <coughs> elimination is not going to help you. How will you get 1 to the left by elimination? Okay, so that you have to do a column swap okay and why is it that you can do column swaps without worrying about anything only thing that column swap does is changes the order in which the bits are sent out nothing else happens okay so you can do a column swap so the first thing to do is do a column swap to reduce g to systematic form maybe you can call it g systematic if you don't want to say same g is equal to both both vectors and now you can go to H systematic, okay, which will be what? Which will be exactly the same as this matrix, right? Right? You can do that. Once you write, write it in that form, this rows of HS will be a, will be the basis for the code, okay? But if you want the exact basis for this C, what will you do? You undo the flip that you did, column swaps that you did to go from G to GS. Okay, so undo column swaps to get exact dual. Okay, okay, so that's the strict mathematical procedure. But in practice, in coding, nobody really will distinguish between these two codes. Okay. A code with its column swapped is considered to be pretty much equal to the code which, which had the columns in different order. Okay, So nobody will obsess with this. Okay, So you can just happily say this is the dual and be happy with it. Just make sure you don't, you always use systematic form codes so that there's no problem. But if you want to be exact, you might want to do these swaps and make sure <coughs> everything works out. Okay, is that clear? So that's, that's how you find the dual. Alright. Okay, so <coughs> okay, so the next example we'll see will hopefully be a more 
interesting example for you. So you can keep going along like this for k equals 1. So k equals 2 will start to get more interesting. How many different possibilities will you have for k equals 2? Okay, so if you want uh, k equals 2, 6 comma 2 codes, looks like there will be many more. Okay, so we had 63 different, possibly different categories in the codes in the, in the previous for k equals 1. For k equals 2, you have to pick two linearly independent <coughs> code words, right? In the binary, for binary vectors, when will two vectors be linearly independent? When will two vectors be linearly dependent? Only when one of them is zero. Only when one of them is zero. No, no, no. It's not. It's not the only criteria. When both are the same, right? When one of them is zero, yeah, <coughs> definitely it's linearly dependent. That's not the only case. Both vectors can be exactly the same. If they are different, can they be linearly dependent? No. For binary, it's not possible. Okay. But for instance, in real vectors, the vector one one is equal, is linearly dependent with the vector. 2 2 okay why is that not possible in binary everything is reduced modulo 2 so you have only two scalars 0 and 1 so, so you can't multiply by the scalar 2 right so there's no real 2 there okay so only way two vectors will be linearly dependent in binary vector spaces is if they are identical <coughs> okay so right now using that idea <coughs> how many different 6 2 codes could you have possibly 63 choose 2 right it looks like all those things will show up. You'll have to actually consider all of them and then what? Maybe you can reduce based on permutation equivalence. You can just equate codes which are permutation equivalent and then reduce that number if you want and finally get to the really different 6-2 codes. Okay? That will be a lot of work. You have to do a lot of work for that. Okay? We won't do that. We'll just consider some simple cases just to get started and think about how this is going to work. Okay? So the case that we'll consider, uh, we'll just see one example. I will take G to be this way 110000111. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is tell me what C is. Okay, all 0, of course. What will be the other vector? Any other vectors in C? The rows of G will obviously be code words. Okay, so you can directly write down the rows of G. That will be linear combination. The first row multiplied by 1, second row multiplied by 0. That will give you this. The next linear combination is first row multiplied by 0, second row multiplied by 1. That will give you 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. The last one is both multiplied by 1. So that will give you 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. <coughs> is that fine? Okay, so that's the code. Okay. So I want you to do some work and get the get a few code words of the exact dual. Okay, so I think how many code words will the dual have? What will be the dual? Dual of this 62 code will actually be a 64 code. So how many code words will it have? 16 code words. Why is that such a difficult thing to do? It's just 2 power 4, right? So 16 different code words. Okay, so just try to write down a few of them. You don't have to write down all of them. At least write down four linearly independent ones. And then a few combinations just to see how it works. What's the first step? First step is to go from G to GS, right, in systematic form. And you'll have to do some swaps, right? It won't come without swaps. <coughs> Remember what swaps you do, go to HS and then undo the swaps and you will get H.
Okay, shall I write down GS? Okay, enough of you have done GS. Okay, it's not too difficult. I think GS would be 101000. Am I right? You can have 010100. Did enough? Of, did you get it in this form? Okay, what's the only swap you have to do? You have to swap the second and the third bit. <coughs> Right? You don't have to do anything else. Okay? Right? So what's HS? Let me write down HS here just to save some space. It will be a, what will be the dimensions of HS first? This is a 2 by 6 matrix. So HS will be a 4 by 6 matrix. Right? And the first, so first, first thing to do is to write down the split. This is your I2 part and this is your P part. Okay, HS the first part will be P transpose. What's P transpose now? 1000 Okay, and then you'll have the identity part which would be 1000010000010 and 0001. Okay. Okay. So now we have to undo these two swaps to get the exact H corresponding to this G. So the H will be what? Okay. Let me write down that also. Actual H will be the first column is going to be the same. The second column will also be 100. So third column will become 0100. Then after that you can happily repeat what you have in HS. Is that fine? Okay. So, so now we readily have four linearly independent vectors in the dual of C. Okay. What are the four linearly independent vectors in the dual of C? The four rows of H. Okay. So you could write, for instance, C perp is generated by one one zero 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 one one zero 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 one zero 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 one okay this is a very mechanical way of getting this okay so what is a generator matrix for c perp h which is the parity check matrix for c okay so both these roles are played by these two things so what would be a parity check matrix for c perp g Okay, so all those things are, are there. Okay, so let's let's try a few smart things now. Okay, could you have guessed that these four would belong to C perp just by looking at the code words of C? Try some intelligent guesses. For instance, look at the last two vectors. Those two should be in the dual, right? You see why it's in the dual. Okay, for any vector in C, just by looking at G, you can figure out those things. Okay, so likewise, even these two vectors, it makes sense that they form parity checks for C. No, I mean looking at the code words, <coughs> right? That's the, uh, those are interesting things to look at. Okay. Okay. So now, for instance, people, people might want to think about intersections between C and C perp. What's the intersection between C and C perp? Okay. So remember, these are just the basis element C actually has, C perp actually has how many code words? 16. Okay. Go ahead. Let me see. What's the intersection between C and C perp? Yeah. So you will see C will actually be present in C perp. Okay. So you notice, notice what's happening. So all these interesting things will happen. So this is a surprise. Okay, C is contained in C perp. Okay, codes like this are called self-orthogonal. Okay, it's a very nice natural terminology. This is called self-orthogonal. So such crazy things can happen in binary vector spaces. These things won't happen in real spaces, right? So you can't have a non-trivial real subspace contained in its dual, right? It will never happen. The inner product is 
nice enough product there. Here it's a little bit different. Okay. All right. So, any questions? Basic questions on how I went about getting C perp from C. Okay. So, it's very important to be very comfortable with this. It's one of those very basic skills that's taught in the beginning of every coding class. Okay. So, you should know this very, very well. Okay. It can get non trivial. I mean, it's, it, just do it by hand. For instance, one nice computer assignment I would suggest is code this in C or MATLAB. Okay, so it's a very nice assignment to try. Okay, so you'll have to take care of a lot of things in practice. For instance, the rows of G might be linearly dependent. So you'll have to, when you eliminate, you, you'll end up getting rid of some of them. So the K that you initially thought you had may not be there. It might be, it might reduce. The rank of G may not be exactly equal to the number of rows, right? It can be less than that. So you have to take care of all those things. You'll see all these utilities are not readily available in C or MATLAB. Okay. The using dating binary rank, MATLAB has some binary rank programs which are very, very slow. They don't run very fast. You might, you might want to write these things. It's, it's good training. Okay. All right. So let's look at just one six three code. Okay. One six three code, which I think is very interesting. Okay. We'll just see one example. Okay, so let's let's do a simple computation before we proceed. In the previous case, we expected 63 choose two different codes on the face of it. it could be a permutation in equivalent or something. In this case, what can you say? Is it easy? Is the computation easy? Okay, how will you choose three different vectors which are linearly independent? Right, that's what you need to do. Okay, the first vector can be chosen to be any non-zero vector. The second vector should be chosen to be something which is not equal to the first one. What about the third one? Which is uh, neither of these and which is not some. Not its sum also, right? So it's very easy to do the computation. And you also have to take care of the fact that you could have chosen them in any order. So you'll have to divide by some three factorial or something. So you can easily compute the total number of different 6-3 codes that one can expect. Maybe some of them will be permutation equivalent. But that's different, okay? So that computation can be done. It's an interesting <coughs> thing to do. Okay. <coughs> So the one one six three code that we will, I will try to give you as an example. This following code. Okay. So it's a very very simple code. So you notice that the way I have written it down, rank of G equals 3, right? You can very easily see that it's 3. The 3 rows are linearly independent. So it's in fact, this G in fact defines a 6-3 code. You can easily write down the 8 code words which are, which are what? Which, which are members of this code. It's, not, it's, it's very easy to write that down also, okay? What I want you to do is find H. Okay, so I think it's, so you have to do how many, I mean there's no elimination required here, but you need how many to reduce it to systematic form. What do you need to do? Column, column swaps, right? right? So you need to do three, three, three or, two, yeah, so maybe two column swaps, depending on how you do it. 
it's enough to do two, two column swaps and get to the permutation and then you'll see you'll notice to your surprise that when you undo the permutation what do you get you get the exact same thing as h okay so what does this mean it means in fact the c equals c perp okay this is the situation is called self dual okay so in this case it's very easy to analyze right the code and its dual are the same okay so finding self dual codes is a very non trivial problem it's as i said it's a very active such problem as well people people work on it constantly okay <clears throat> so that's the only case i wanted to consider so so this this thing can get a little bit non trivial if you're not used to it particularly in exam pressure if i give you a generator matrix and ask you to find the parity check matrix i've seen a lot of people make mistakes okay so it's good to practice practice this just for from an exam point of view all right so <clears throat> that's about code and the the dual i i want to point out one further fact which is which which usually is not emphasized in the beginning of uh, coding classes but it's becoming more and more significant today now that you have so many so, so many advances in coding theory it's what's important so i'll go back to one of some some k, the k equals 2 case just to highlight this fact so we'll look at a 62 code with g equals let's say let me pick something something in systematic form 1101010101 okay i'll pick it in systematic form itself okay what's the code okay what's the code all zeros 0101010101 0 okay so that's my code okay well i think i should that's my code okay all right so if if you try to find the parity check matrix what will the parity check matrix be did i make any mistakes or what people are staring at me at not telling me what, what what mistake i made oh there is a okay there you go it should be 0 1 right is that fine okay good so if you write down h best by doing the ip p transpose i switch you'll get 1 1 1 0 Zero one one one, and then you would get one zero zero zero, zero one zero zero, zero zero one zero, zero 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 one. Okay. <coughs> okay. Right. Okay. So, so, so I've been emphasizing that the dual and the parity check matrix matrix are likely to play play a very good role in decoding because. without any reference to the message they tell you whether whether or not a 6 bit vector in this case is going to be a code word or not why is it why is it true so you see is a code word a vector is a code word if and only if h times that vector transpose is zero okay so that's 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 you can see that that itself gives you some information about decoding maybe you you want more information suppose for instance what does what does what does it mean to say this is in the dual okay so for instance you, since that's the second row you know this belongs to c perp okay what does it mean one one way is one way of interpreting that is that if we take a dot product of this vector with any code word you should get zero okay so suppose i have a code word that i will not specify i'll simply say it's c0 c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 an arbitrary code word c c this okay i know these two dot products have to be zero okay so suppose i evaluate the dot product what do i get c0 plus c1 plus c3 equals zero okay in every code word of c i should have c0 plus c1 plus c3 being zero okay 
okay so that's the power of that statement by saying 110100 belongs to the dual okay so likewise there are other parity checks right <coughs> okay so this is this is called a parity check Okay. It says check the parity of the first bit, second bit and the fourth bit in your code word. If it has even parity, what does it mean? That vector could be a code word. Why am I saying could be a code word? Because I don't know about the other bits. right? When is it a code word? When it satisfies all these four independent parity checks specified by the parity check matrix. Then it is a code word. If I know it satisfies one parity check, it could be a code word. If it doesn't satisfy, what do I know definitely? There's no way it will be a code word even if you give me all the other bits. Okay, so that's a powerful check to have. Okay, so likewise you can write down other parity checks. For instance, the first row will give you what? C1, C0 plus C2 equals 0. Third row will give you, I'm sorry, I think I'm going a little bit here. It will give you C0 plus C1 plus C4 equals 0. Okay, and the last row gives me c1 plus c5 equals 0. Okay, I think I am writing all over the place, but uh, you can see you can see that those are the parity checks. Okay, those are four independent parity checks which together when satisfied also mean that the vector is definitely a code word. Okay, but are there other parity checks? Can you come up with any other parity check? Yeah, any linear combination of these four will again be Another parity check which has to be satisfied. So what will be the total number of non-trivial parity checks? Of course, if you use the all zero code word, then zero equals zero. Any what is the total number of non non-trivial parity checks in any nk code? 2 power n minus k minus 1, which is equal to the number of non-zero vectors in the in the yes. dual code. Okay, so every non-zero vector in the dual code gives you a parity check for the code. Okay, so that's the that's the important in today's context. That is a very very important fact to note, and I'm bringing it up very early in this class because we'll we'll soon move into this, and that time it should not surprise you. Okay, so that's a very important fact. Every non-zero vector in C perp is a parity check. for C. Okay, It may not be, so So if you take enough of them, you will get a set of independent parity checks which together will mean an if and only if. If all these things are satisfied, it's definitely a code word. But you may not, you may also have partial information. You, know, you may say, okay, these bits satisfy this. Okay, So that's the power of parity checks. So somebody says, what's the total number of non-trivial parity checks? It is 2 power n minus k minus 1. Okay, So those are some facts about the parity check matrix. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I think there are about five minutes left. I don't want to start something new. We'll. Uh, I think I'm. I'm happy with the way we've done the base basic uh, vector spaces idea. I think it should be reasonably clear. But you'll you'll see easily that when this number becomes large, when n becomes thousand and k becomes five hundred. You're not going to be able to do this by hand. Okay, given a G, you're not going to be able to do elimination and go from G to H by hand. It's very difficult, right? It's, it's, and it's also not possible to list out all the code words. It's very clear. So you need computing tools that can do some fancy things for you to come up with parity checks. But you can come up with parity checks, right? You can come up with a lot of parity checks. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. And that kind of thing is useful for decode. Okay. All right. So I think to sign off, we'll just see one example. Of, uh, of a situation where I'll ask you to go from G to H, which could be slightly interesting. Okay. No, 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 no. I want this. I want this. Sorry. Oops. Okay. Okay, this is my G. Okay. 
So what are the what 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 can you say about the parameters of the code that G generates? Okay, what is n? n is 8 that's very easy can you decide k immediately no okay so to even to decide k what should you do you have to go through elimination and reduce it to systematic form once it comes to systematic form you can decide on k okay so i wanted to do that i wanted to do the elimination you might need to do swaps also right come bring it to systematic form go to hs go to gs and then go to hs and then come back to h and complete this picture Okay, so maybe some of you are very good at doing this, but I'm sure some of you recognize that this can be slightly non-trivial, even in the very small, simple case. You'll have to do a lot of swaps, you'll have to do a lot of elimination. So if you're not used to doing this thing very fast, you can make a mistake very easily. See, you can also do row interchange, right? That doesn't change anything, right? From your linear algebra background, so hopefully you realize row interchanges do not change the row space. Row space is my code space, so it's not a problem. <coughs> Three. Which is your linear combination, which is in this four? So to get the exact dual, remember you have to remember your swaps, and then undo them after you get uh, just. Because if you don't do that, you won't get the exact dual. You'll, you'll end up with a dual which is not orthogonal. You say, okay, where did I go wrong? Okay, you have to undo the swaps. Okay, how many of you have concluded k equals 4? Okay, so k equals 4 is the right answer. In fact, if you do a lot of work and find h, what do you think you will get? Can somebody make an intelligent guess? Yeah, you'll, at the end of the day, you will get an h which is the same as g. Okay, So, <laughs> this is also a self-dual code. It's a very famous code. Okay, it's a very, very, very famous code in coding and uh, you might want to get acquainted with it. In fact, if you find all its code words, what do you think will it will be? It will be a very interesting set of code words you will get. Okay, so it's, it's got lots of, uh, you take a look at it, yeah, even parity, yes, but there will be a lot of structure to a lot of its code words. It's a very wonderful code. Okay, so it's good if you, if you like such things to list out the code words of this code and just stare at it for a while, see if you notice some patterns. 
it's got some beauty to this okay so i don't know if, if you if you see beauty in ones and zeros forming patterns you'll like this okay all right so so that's uh, in this in this case g equals h okay all right so i'll just sign off with a couple of facts which you might want to prove when you have time so first thing you can show is if g and h are generator and parity check matrices for a code what will g times h transpose be <coughs> it will be a big zero matrix right what will be the dimension of the zero matrix yeah whatever k by n minus k whatever some big zero matrix it will be okay so g times h transpose will be zero what are the fact uh, which you would like for instance g times g transpose is zero implies c is contained in c perp for instance okay okay and uh, and uh, c c is contained in c perp and k equals n by 2 implies c equals c perp okay okay so all these things are nice things to try and show if you if you want to play around with these things a little bit more to try and understand it's it's very trivial but still it's it's good practice to have for instance in this 8 this in this 4 by 8 matrix g that i have here as an example you'll see g times g transpose is zero what is g times g transpose being zero means any two row should be orthogonal to each other the row should be orthogonal to itself you'll see all those things properties will be satisfied so you see immediately c will be contained in c perp but you notice what k is n by 2 which means the dimensions of c and c perp are the same so the number of code words are the same so obviously c should be equal to C perp as well. So, we can easily conclude those things based on these kind of uh, studies. Okay? Alright. Thanks.